The next thing is stress. And stress is a very, very important factor. Now, stress does many things. One is it shrinks the brain. It actually creates significant damage to the prefrontal cortex. And stress actually affects all your hormonal immunological systems. Let me tell you how. <clears throat> so your limbic system is the oldest, one of the oldest part of the brain. It's the emotional brain. The limbic system's job is to, part of it is memory, but bigger part is emotional interpretation. Your limbic system interprets a piece of act. Now remember, it's your interpretation. The same act could be stressful for one person, but pleasant for the other person. So there's an interpretive component to that. So this person interprets this behavior and deems it stressful. <clears throat> the message goes to the hypothalamus, and there's a direct path to the hypothalamus, then to the pituitary. And those of you who know physiology, pituitary is the center of all hormonal, endocrine, every aspect of your body. Your thyroid gland is controlled from that. Your insulin is controlled from there. Your growth hormone is controlled. Everything, immune system is controlled from there. So the interpretation that takes place in your limbic system goes to the hypothalamus, to the pituitary, and what's released is dependent on how you've interpreted it. So good stress and bad stress are important. Initially, we felt very uncomfortable about this because scientists, stress and stress interpretation seems like a soft concept. But it's not, it's the brain. So where do we start? <clears throat> um, I'll get past this. Lots of studies that show stress reduces BDNF, reduces the size of the hippocampus, um, uh, affects the part of the brain that are associated with attention, actually shrinks those parts of the brain. And, and studies like for meditation that have shown to actually increase attention and even increase your ability to, uh, to attend and memorize. We know all of these studies. So how do you start the process forward? Interpreting. In our household, <clears throat> my, we always tell the story, my mother was a politician and she was very, one well, those prim and proper, the gloves and the chandeliers and all that. She comes to two neurologists' home where there's a whiteboard in every room, including an eight foot by six foot whiteboard in our bedroom. She almost has a seizure. And, <clears throat> But whiteboards are important because we get up and write down one of the things we do with our two kids as well. Good stress and bad stress, specifically. This is good stress for me, this is bad stress for me. And identify your stress. Lifetimes people go through life without ever addressing or identifying the most important thing. What is increasing your stress and what's actually good stress. Now let me tell you what good stress is. So good stress is the kind of stress and it's the most important thing. When I get to optimize, I'll tell you, this is good stress. Good stress is the kind of stress that's driven by your purpose, has a direction, is time bound. It's, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and that's not a train coming at you. And it's, it's, it's well circumscribed behavior that you have instituted. That's purpose, that's critical. Without that, nothing else works. So that's good stress. And it's important for you to define that and increase it throughout life, whiteboards. And, and bad stress is the opposite. You're doing something repetitive that's not yours, that doesn't seem to have an end, and increases stress. And then your limbic system interprets it as bad, and all those chemical changes that you think, that we talked about, happen. And that's why the brain shrinks. That's why the thyroid gland is affected by stress. That's why your growth hormone is affected by stress. These studies are all out there. So perception is critical. And we talked about bad stress, and define your bad stress, and, get, and try to reduce it. So some steps towards stress management, not stress reduction, stress management. Identify the stressors, we said that. Stop multitasking. There is no such thing as multitasking. And when I say this, people say, oh, it's not a big deal. It is a huge deal. Multitasking is par part of our DNA in, in, in this culture. I'm in New York City, for God's sakes. It's, there is no such thing as multitasking. It's doing multiple things badly and creating urgency and redundancy and urgency. And that creates a subclinical stress level that accumulates in your body. So it's critical to um, eliminate that. It doesn't mean you don't do multiple things. For, my goodness, we do multiple things. But everything should be in silos, uh, you know, in their, own, uh, in their own ways. Third is first things th first, prioritize. So it's, these are all management tools, aren't they? But that has to be the, where we start. 
And fourthly, as a separate thing, meditate. Whatever that means to you. By the way, for us, meditation doesn't mean sitting in a corner and crossing legs and all that. I, I respect that. I love that. That's not me, as you could have guessed. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's walking, exercising, and just a walk with a cadence, with a, with a, with a you know, count. Uh, and, but, and with our kids, we do mindful uh, breathing, where you sit and you teach them how to breathe, in and out, cleansing, and then focusing on that. And initially, uh, when I was at NIH, I would make fun of this. I, I truly would. But, and I'm still making fun of some of the things. But not this. This is profound. Imagine kids being aware of their emotions being aware of their stress levels and managing that. When did I teach that in school? So uh, that's a critical thing. And by the way, just three minutes twice a day. Because once you become good at it, then you can actually take that sense into your day. And more importantly, everybody says, I can't meditate because I lose focus. No, that act of losing focus is actually the best part. If at first you can only focus on your breath for five seconds, that's fine. Your job is now to move it to seven seconds, then to nine seconds, then to 10 seconds. And that act actually rebuilds the focus centers of the brain. Let me tell you about the focus centers of the brain. The first part of the brain that's affected as we age is not your memory centers. You know where it is? Your focus centers. So if you want to, and the first part of the brain that's significantly affected in Alzheimer's is the focus centers. And thirdly, the good news, it's the part of the brain that you can affect, you can improve. So that's the benefit of meditation, mindfulness, or whatever you're doing that can create that focus and relaxation.